Chinali Studios presents Take Advantage of Five Before Five. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah al-Ladhi khalaq al-Samawat wal-Arda waj'al al-Zulumat wal-Nur thumma al-Ladhina kafaru bi-Rabbihim ya'dilun. لا يحصي عدد نعمه العادون ولا يؤدي شكره المتحمدون ولا يبلغ مدى عظمته الواصفون بديع السماوات والأرض إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن فيكون وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأعتقد أن لا رب إلا إياه شهادة من لا يرتاب في شهادته واعتقاد من لا يستنكف عن عبادته وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الأمين أرسله إلى الخلق أجمعين بلسان عربي مبين بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في سبيل الله المشركين وعبد ربه حتى أتاه اليقين فصلى الله وسلم على خير خلق الله أجمعين وعلى أصحابه المنتخبين وعلى من سار على نهجهم واتبع سبيلهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has been blessed with جوامع الكلم or the most concise and precise of speech The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said ألا وإني أتيت جوامع الكلم I have been blessed with concise speech Therefore, when we look at the precious pearls that came out of the Prophet's mouth sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we find many of his ahadith, many of his ahadith are in fact treasure chests of wisdom. The words might be small, but the meanings behind them are great. The speech might be succinct, but the benefits and the blessings that can be derived from them are uncountable. And of the ahadith that are jawamir, that are comprehensive in nature, is the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu an that is reported in the Mustadrak of Al-Hakim and the Mustad of Imam Ahmad and others with an authentic chain of narrations in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said or Ibn Abbas reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to a man while he was advising him اغتنم خمسا قبل خمسا take advantage of five matters before five other matters شبابك قبل هرمك your youth before you become old. وَصِحَّتَكَ قَبْلَ سَقَمِكَ And your health before you fall sick. وَغِنَاكَ قَبْلَ فَقْرِكَ And your richness before you become poor. وَفَرَاغَكَ قَبْلَ شُغْلِكَ And your free time before you become busy. وَحَيَاتَكَ قَبْلَ مَوْتِكَ And your life before your death. So in this small hadith, the Prophet ﷺ advised a person and this shows his eagerness and his love for his ummah and to his followers. Because the Prophet ﷺ was continually advising. In fact, he was only sent as a rahmatan lil alameen, as a mercy to the world by advising them, by exhorting them, by commanding them to turn away from the love of this world, to turn away from a love of this dunya, and to save themselves from the fire of hell and earn Allah's pleasure through the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet ﷺ advised this person to take advantage of five things before five other things will follow after the first of the five things. The first word, Ightanim, comes from the same root that signifies sheep, ghanam. Sheep in Arabic means ghanam. And Ightanim is from the same root that also signifies sheep. So what is the meaning of Ightanim? Ightanim is used to indicate any good that can be obtained without much effort. Just like sheep, you can easily catch them if they go astray. You can easily take them. And this is why booty, after it is, uh, the, the war booty that is found in the battlefield after the army has fled is called ghanima. Ghanima, because it's easy to take, just like the sheep. In other words, you can grasp it without much effort. When the army has fled after the battle has been won, then that which is left behind is called ghanima. From the same root, ightanim, ghanam. All of this is from the same root. So the Prophet wasallam, it is as if he is pointing out that these five matters are very easy to obtain. They're easy prey to catch. Very simple to benefit from. And that is because these are treasures that everyone possesses, yet so few people appreciate. So from the first word, we automatically are told that these five things 
are things that everybody has. Everybody possesses these things. Yet very few of us realize that they are a ghanima. Realize that how easy and how precious these things are. What are these five things? The Prophet ﷺ started off and said, Shababaka qabla haramik. Shabab, shab, a youth, a young person. So the Prophet ﷺ said, take advantage of your youth before your haram. And your, uh, the word haram means old age, maybe even senility. An age in which a person does not have the power, does not have the mental faculties that he did when he had while he was a youth. As we know, the youthfulness is a time when a person is the most energetic, when he lays out the foundations for his future, when he plans his life basically. So the Prophet ﷺ said, take advantage of this time before the time comes when you do not have that enthusiasm, that zeal, that, that outlook if you like. The whole enthusiasm that a youth has, the energy that he has been blessed with, will never be given to him after this age. Therefore the Prophet ﷺ said, seize the moment, take advantage of it. So a person should exercise this energy for the sake of Allah, in procuring knowledge of Allah, and in obtaining halal rizq as well, and in worshipping Allah which acts with, through acts that he might not be able to do later on in life. Realize here now that when we say youth, we are not talking about the western concept of youth, which means youthfulness finishes when he's 18 or 19 years old. No. In the Islamic Sharia, the, a man's life has been divided into a number of, of uh, sectors, if you like, a number of stages. Shabab, Shab, according to the strongest opinion, means before reaching the age of 40. This is because 40 is the prime of one's life, when his mental and physical capabilities have reached a peak, when he is 40 years old. And after that, then they start to go down. Therefore, 40 is the prime of one's life, which means that anything before this prime, a person is still in his youth. So when we're saying shab or shabab, we are not talking about a bunch of teenagers. So obviously, these two are included in the shabab. We are talking about everyone who is beneath the age of 40. So this is something which a person should take into account. The Prophet ﷺ said, take advantage of this before haramik, before you reach a stage where you become senile or old or weak or feeble, any stage in which you will not have the, the, the faculties which you did when you were a youth. Remember too, that of the seven people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shelter on the day of judgment, all of you know the hadith, right? The Prophet ﷺ said, seven are the people that will be sheltered on the day of judgment, the day in which there is no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of these people, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَشَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ A youth, a young person who grew up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember the youth is up to 40, don't forget. So this young person, whether he's 20 or 30 or right before reaching the age of 40, he has grown up and been raised, he has raised himself in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has kept himself busy in the worship of Allah. Likewise, the Prophet said in an authentic hadith, he said, إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَا يَعْجُبُ لِلشَّابِ لَا صَبْوَةَ لَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Lord, He is pleased with, He is amazed at the youth who does not have any inclinations, meaning any evil inclinations, meaning He does not do evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased and loves such a youth who is straight in the worship of Allah. He does not turn left or right to the paths of shaitan. Allah loves this person and is amazed at him because in general it is the youth because of their virility, because of their strong desires, they are the ones that swerve left and right away from the path of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises the people of the cave. Remember the Surah Al-Kahf in the Quran. It describes them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them, إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ They were a group of young people, fitya, youth, late teenagers if you like, or early manhood if you like. They were a group of youth who believed in their Lord. So Allah praises them by this, is that even though they were young, they were still young in age, they still had enough wisdom, they still had enough sense to see through the kufr of their people and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the first of the five, shababaka qabla haramik. The second of the five matters, is صِحَّتَكَ قَبْلَ سَقَمِكَ صِحَّة One's health The fact that a person lives a normal life He is not afflicted with diseases and plagues Take advantage of this before diseases and plagues come Why? Because mankind being man will fall sick Every one of us has fallen sick If we didn't fall sick we wouldn't be humans We would be divine then The very fact that we are human means that we're gonna 
experience difficulties. We're going to face problems. And of those problems is that our health will not be at the peak and at the level that it always is. So times will come when we will fall sick. And some of those times the sicknesses will be more severe. To certain people it will be even more severe. So the Prophet ﷺ is reminding us, we don't know when we're going to fall sick. We don't know when we will not have full possession of our faculties, of our strength, of our mental powers before we will fall sick. Therefore take advantage of this before that time comes. And subhanAllah, how true this is. Brothers and sisters, when we have a headache, which is one of the most minest form, minorest forms of afflictions, the smallest form of afflictions, we cannot do anything. We have to go sit down, take some Tylenol or pills, and not even we can't even do the slightest things that we usually do. Read a book even, nothing. We just sit there and do absolutely nothing. And this is just a headache. Something we know is temporary, a few hours down the road it will go away. So what about the sickness or disease more than this? Therefore, when we are strong, when we are powerful, take advantage of it. Before the time comes when the sickness will come. The Prophet ﷺ said, نِعْمَتَانِ مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ There are two blessings. The majority of mankind have been deceived concerning them. The majority of mankind has been deceived. In other words, they do not appreciate these blessings. Two blessings. What are they? الصِّحَّةُ وَالْفَرَاغ Health, good health, and free time. So in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that one of these two things is good health. People don't appreciate the blessings of good health. Once a person came to Yunus ibn Ubaid, one of the scholars of the Salaf, and he complained of extreme poverty and that he had not been blessed with much. So Yunus ibn Ubaid asked him, would you be willing to give away your sight for a certain amount of money? The man said, no, of course not. Then he asked him, would you be willing to give your hands away? He said, of course not. He said, your feet, of course not. So on and so forth. Until when he finished, he said, I see that you have hundreds of thousands of millions of blessings. And yet you are complaining of poverty? So how true it is? How true it is? Here we have our full faculties. The fact that we can see and hear. Look at someone whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested with blindness, which is a very severe test. And that is why the Prophet sallallahu said in authentic hadith that there are two things. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes them away from a person and he is patient, he is guaranteed jannah. These two things are the two eyes. In other words, if a person is blind and we seek Allah's refuge, from the physical and the spiritual blindness in this world and in the hereafter, Allah Taala has tested him by making him blind, and he is patient. Then Allah will of a surety reward him jannah. But ask yourself, this blessing that Allah has given us, do we ever sit down and think about this blessing? Try to live not even half a day, not even an hour. Try to live five minutes. Close your eyes and go around your own house, the very house that you know. You will not be able to do so. Therefore, how about one who has been blessed with not just eyesight, but with hearing, with health, with arms and limbs, with energy, with vitality, with enthusiasm, all of this stuff. Should we not appreciate the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we not realize how sweet healthness is that we can use it for the worship of Allah? When we are blessed with these bodies, why don't we use it to worship Allah? And the least that we can do, brothers and sisters, is the fara'id. Five times a day salah, fasting the month of Ramadan, going for hajj. All of this requires our bodies, our physical efforts. This is the least, the least we can do, the bare minimum. And of course, the more that one does, then the better it is for him. This is the second of the five matters. Your health before you fall sick. The third is غِنَاكَ قَبْلَ فَقْرِكَ Your richness before poverty. And we know, all of us know, that money comes and goes. One day we might not have anything. The next day we will have much, much more than we need. One day a person might have the best of jobs and the largest of salaries. Yet the next day... Something happens and he does not have that job anymore. And he loses his source of income. So the wise person takes advantage of, this, of his richness before he becomes poor. He invests for his future. What do we learn here in the West? We always learn how do you invest for the future? How am I when I retire at 55 or 60 or 65? How am I going to support myself? From now I have to invest. I have to invest in the best stock markets, the best business deals. I have to make sure that my money works for me when I need it the most. Therefore, these kuffar, they are learning to invest later on for themselves in this life. Should we not invest for the hereafter as well? Should we not think about investing this money so that we can pick it and pluck it in the hereafter when we need it far more than we needed it in this world? As for the investments of this dunya, then the kafir and the muslim are both the same. They, they both do them. Even the Prophet ﷺ would store staple food items even up to a year. Sometimes he would store barley and grain for a whole year for his family. 
So this is something that is halal, of course. And the Prophet ﷺ himself did it. And we should do it as well. Make sure that we have enough money for our family and children ourselves so that we are not poor, we are not beggars. There is, not, there is no doubt that this is a part of our sharia as well. But while we are doing this, let us not forget that we also need to invest for the akhirah. We also need to invest for the real future, our real life after our death. The Prophet ﷺ once asked his companions, Who amongst you loves his inheritor's money more than he loves his own money? The meaning of this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ is asking, Who amongst you loves the money of those that will inherit from him more than he loves his own money? For example, does the father love the money of his son or does he love his own money? Of course the father loves his own money. Likewise, Every person will love his own money more than he loves the money of other people. So that the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, all of us love our money more than we love the money of our inheritors. We all love our own money, we guard it, we protect it more than we love the money of our inheritors. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily, the money that you spend in charity is your money. And the money that you leave behind is the money of your inheritors. Ponder over that hadith for a while. How true it is. The father, when he loves his own money more than the money of his son, does he not realize that one day his son will take that very money of his and he will have nothing to do with it? The money that he protected for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, building an empire, guarding it, protecting it. And then at the twinkling of an eye, his life is taken and all of that money is left in his inheritor's hands. Where has he gone and where has his love gone and where has the money gone? All of it is gone. But what is left? Where is his money now? All the money that he spent during his life for the sake of Allah, if there was any such money. So any money that he spent in charity for the sake of Allah, when I say charity, obviously the Arabic word includes zakah as well. The zakah and the sadaqah, the sadaqah jari and the waqf, any type of monetary blessing, any type of monetary good that you did, this is the money that will be yours permanently. And everything besides this will go into the hands of your inheritors. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said concerning Qarun, and you know Qarun was a person, he had been blessed with so much money, as the Quran states, that keys to open all of the treasure chests he had, these keys by themselves would be difficult for a group of strong men to carry. So you can imagine he must have had thousands and thousands of treasure chests of gold and silver. A multi-millionaire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him in the Quran, وَبْتَغِ فِيمَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا And earn through what Allah has given you the dar al-akhirah, the hereafter. Earn the hereafter. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا And don't forget your portion of this world. Beautiful ayah. Your portion of this world. The main purpose of your money, O Qarun, and O all of mankind, should be to earn the pleasure of Allah, the real dar, the dar al-akhirah, the real house of the akhirah. And while you're earning the real house, then don't forget your small portion of this world as well. Yes, you do need a house in this world. Yes, you do need to live a family and children and food and job and income. You do need it. But this is just a portion. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Your small portion of this world, don't forget it. But the real purpose of the money is to earn the pleasure of Allah for your house of the Akhirah, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the kafir on the day of judgment. The kafir cries out in the, as the Quran states, مَا أَغْنَى عَنِّي مَالِيَا مَا أَغْنَى عَنِّي مَالِيَا My money was of no use to me. The kafir, when he is resurrected on the day of judgment, he will cry out, Ma aghna anni maliya. My money was of no use to me. It didn't do me any good. Because the kafir, no matter how long he lives, once he dies and tastes death, and he realizes that after this is eternity, eternity, then those 50, 60, 70, 100 years that he lived in this life become like the twinkling of an eye. Therefore, when Allah will ask the kafir on the day of judgment, How many years did you live in this world? He will say, I only lived a day or a part of a day, a few hours. He cannot imagine the kafir and even the impious person who is resurrected on the Day of Judgment. He cannot imagine that he spent 60, 70, 80 years without doing any good deeds. So he will say, I only lived a day or a part of a day, a few hours. How else is it that I have so few deeds to account for? Also when he sees in perspective eternity versus 60 years, then those 60 years become to him like the twinkling of an eye. So we have to take advantage of our richness before our poverty, money comes and goes. When we have it, we invest for the future. Not just the future of this dunya, but the future of the akhirah as well. And remember, ya ikhwa, remember Islam is the religion from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a perfect religion. Allah does not ask us to do impossible things. Look at zakah. 2.5% of your money. How much do you pay in taxes? How much do you pay? 
30, 40, 50%, in some countries over 50%. Look at how much the kuffar ask you. 30, 40% of your income. And look at how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you. As for the taxes, you will give them. What else can you do? But when Allah asks you for 2.5%, that is all. 2.5% is nothing of a person's income. That is all that Allah asks for the money that you have. This, the people refuse to give. Subhanallah. Look at the mercy and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look at how the other humans and mankind treat us. Every single country in the world, look at the tax rates it has, 30, 40, 50, 60% and compare this to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us. Likewise, don't forget that when you feed your family, this too is an ibadah. You are doing it for the sake of Allah. If you do it for the sake of Allah, you will be rewarded. Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, that a luqma, a morsel of food, one morsel of food, one handful of food, if you put it in the, your wife's mouth, one morsel of food, right? This will be a reward for you on the Day of Judgment. Now, everybody, Muslim and non-Muslim, feeds his wife and family. But will everybody be rewarded, be rewarded for that? No. Why? Because only the one who does it, remembering Allah, thinking about Allah, for the sake of Allah, this person will be rewarded. I ask you and ask myself as well, the last time you went shopping, was Allah in your mind? Did you think of doing this for Allah? When you picked up the milk and the bread, was your heart thinking about Allah? Oh Allah, I am buying this food through halal money. And this is halal food because I want to feed my family and this is an obligation that you have put upon me. Therefore, I am doing it for your sake. Frankly, majority of us don't do that. We go to the market, we go eat out, we go do this and that, but we don't think about Allah. So the very act that we do, when we do it for the sake of Allah, it becomes reward. And when we do it for the sake of this dunya, it goes to waste. That is why the Prophet ﷺ said, even when a man satisfies his sexual desires with his wife, he will get rewarded. But only when he does so, with Allah in his mind. Ya Allah, I am a man, I have desires, I know that you have allowed this for me and have pro prohibited other things for me. Therefore, in order to take advantage of the halal and keep away from the haram, I will now engage with intercourse with my wife. Who amongst us has this in mind? The same act, the same food, the same money, the same everything. But only the mu'min and the muttaqi, he thinks of Allah 24-7 as they say. Only the mu'min, he thinks of Allah in every step that he does. He does not move, nor does he stop. He does not breathe, nor does he take a morsel of food or a sip of water, except that Allah in his mind. So such a person, when he reaches that state, then whatever he does, his studying, even if he's studying engineering or medicine or whatever, becomes for the sake of Allah. He's sleeping becomes for the sake of Allah. He's eating and drinking becomes for the sake of Allah. Why? Because he thinks of Allah. Therefore, when we say that spend for the sake of Allah, we are not just talking about zakah and sadaqah and charity. Of course, this is yani, par excellence, the best thing you can do with your money. Give it in charity. And there's no doubt that the best charity as well is that which is sadaqa jariya, building a masjid, building a school, supporting students of knowledge, giving printing books and pamphlets for the sake of Allah, Islamic books and pamphlets, giving Qur'an zah. This type of sadaqa jariya, this is the best type. But don't forget that the majority of income that we spend, and in fact for the moment, all of the income that he spends, it can be for the sake of Allah as well, as long as he has Allah. Yani thinking about Allah for the sake of Allah with the intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the third of the five things. The fourth, the Prophet said, وَفَرَاغَكَ قَبْلَ شُغْلِكَ And your free time before you become busy. This is yet another great treasure that every single one of us possesses. Every single one of us. Free time before you get busy. How much free time do we have? And yet what do we waste it on? Think about it. Think about how much free time all of us have been blessed with. Hours and hours every day. Hours and hours. And they go by, what do we waste it on? Primarily in this country at least, television, gossip, socialization. No benefit whatsoever, neither for this world nor the hereafter. And that is why, remember the hadith of the Prophet system that we just quoted. Two blessings, most people have been deceived by them. In other words, they don't realize they are blessings. as wal faragh health and free time. Free time. Okay, you have to work eight hours a day. No problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed this for you, obligated it upon you. Yes. When you come home, you have four or five hours. Spend them wisely for the sake of Allah. And we're not saying when we say for the sake of Allah, you stand in prayer five hours a day, you read Quran every three, four hours. No, we're not saying this. The more you do, the better it is. But when you spend time with your family for the sake of Allah, you make your wife smile. You make your children happy. You raise them Islamically. You go out, you go out with them just for a picnic, just so that your, the, the, the bonds of love between you be, can become stronger. And you do it for the sake of Allah. This too 
is spending your time wisely. So don't forget, of course there are religious deeds, which are the best deeds to do. Yes, of course, recite the Qur'an. Every one of us should recite the Qur'an every day, a little bit, even if it's only 5-10 minutes. Have some relationship with the Qur'an. Every one of us should pray some extra prayers as well. A few sunnas and nafas, if not the continual sunnas that, every, uh, that the Prophet ﷺ used to pray. Yes, this is the most important thing to do. But don't forget that there are many acts that can be acts of worship if you change them for the sake of Allah. If you're near to do them, it's for the sake of Allah. So don't waste your time. And the greatest waster of time is the television. The greatest waster of time is the television. You turn it on and an hour, two hours go by. And not only have you not gained anything for the Akhirah, you have not gained anything for this world as well. You have literally killed, murdered your time. Done absolutely nothing with it. And realize that even... Yani you're lucky if you're going to come away from those two hours without any sins. How many are the sins that are present in television with music and women and whatnot? This is the greatest yani thing. Frankly, in my opinion, it is better for the mu'min not even to have this instrument in his house. Because the evil that comes from it, like Allah says about alcohol, the evil that comes from it is more than the good that is obtained from it. But realize only that when you have some free time, take advantage of it. Take advantage of this free time and the greatest thing that we can do in this free time as well is the worship of Allah and the greatest act of worship, one of the greatest acts of worship is the seeking of knowledge. Take a book out to read, listen to some cassettes, listen to some CDs, whatever you can do to increase your ilm, go attend some classes. Or even visit one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, visit your Muslim brother with the proper Islamic etiquette and adab and this too is an act that you can do that it will pass your time away and you will be gaining rewards while you do this. So realize brothers and sisters that when we're talking about spending your time wisely, we're not just talking about purely religious deeds, no. Even if it means for this world, spend your time wisely, do something in this world, learn a trade, learn something that, that can benefit you in this world. So that you can benefit other people as well. Like we said, Islam is a whole way of life. Islam is a complete code. Don't just think that we're talking about religious acts here. Of course, this is the best. And the more you do, the better. But don't forget that the majority of acts, and for the mu'min, all of the acts that he does, they can be transformed into acts of worship if and only if he does them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the fourth of the five matters. وَفَرَاغَكَ قَبْلَ شغلك. Take advantage of your free time before you become busy. And the last of the five is وَحَيَاتَكَ قَبْلَ مَوْتِكَ and your life before your death. And this one phrase summarizes it all. Take advantage of your life before your death. Every one of us has a life. That's why we're sitting here right now. That's why we're listening to this. And every one of us without a doubt will die as well. Look at the generations before you and the generations before them. None of them is alive. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu himself, as Allah says, إِنَّكَ مَيَّتُونَ إِنَّهُ مَيَّتُونَ You are going to die and they too are going to die. And it is as Allah said, the Prophet ﷺ passed away and so did the people that opposed him and believed in him. They all have passed away. And the turn came for those after them and then after them until our turn it is now and our turn too will go away. Therefore the Prophet ﷺ reminded us, وَحَيَاتَكَ قَبْلَ مَوْتِكَ Take advantage of your life before your death. This is the greatest of foresights. Hence the Prophet ﷺ concluded the hadith with this phrase. Every one of us has been given just one life. That's it. One life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, everyone will taste death. So how are we going to use this life before death comes? As for the kafir, then this person will waste it totally. Because he will make this world his goal. He will only live to appease and satisfy every desire of his. And then on the day of judgment, they will beg Allah to send them back to this life. As Allah describes them in the Quran, حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدُ الْمَوْتِ When death comes to them, قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونِ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتْ He will say, Oh my Lord. All of a sudden his Lord comes to him. All of a sudden he remembers Allah. Whereas throughout years that he lived, Allah was nowhere near him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the furthest thing from his mind. On the day of judgment when he is resurrected, he will say, Ya Rabbi, O oh my Lord, irji'uni. Allow me to go back. لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتْ So that I may do good in the time that I had left. I didn't do good, let me do good now. Allah obviously will say, Kalla, no, this has not been allowed for you. You have only been allowed one life, and this was the life that you lived. Now you will not be allowed to go back and change that life. It is as you have done, and now your recompense time has come. For every good that you have done, you'll be rewarded, and for every evil, you will be punished. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also describes them in the Quran as saying, Rabbana abusarna wa sami'na farji'na na'ma salihan inna muqinun. The kufa will say, Oh, our Lord, once again, our Lord, where was this Lord of yours in the life? Where was He? During the 67 years you had in this life. Since they forgot Allah, Allah forgot them. Nasullah fanasiyahum. The meaning of Nasullah in this verse is they did not care about Allah, they neglected Allah. Fanasiyahum, therefore Allah will neglect them. 
because they didn't think about Allah on the day of judgment Allah will not care about them and he will throw them into the fire of hell so they will say on the day of judgment rabbana absarna wa sami'na oh our lord we have seen and we have heard we know for a fact now we know for sure what is true and what is not farji'na na'mal salihan let us go back to do good deeds inna muqinun we are now believers we believe in you we believe in the day of judgment we believe in this but Allah will not allow this to happen because everyone has only one life. That is Allah has given him. And this is what he must make the best of in this world so that he will then be judged according to it in the hereafter. So these are the five things that the Prophet ﷺ told the man to do. He advised the man to do. اغتنم خمسا قبل خمسا Take advantage of five matters before five others شبابك قبل هرمك Your youth before your old age وصحتك قبل ساقمك And your health before you fall sick, وَغِنَاكَ قَبْلَ فَقْرِكَ And your wealth before your poverty, وَفَرَاغَكَ قَبْلَ شُغْلِكَ And your free time before you become busy, وَحَيَاتَكَ قَبْلَ مَوْتِكَ And your life before your death. This hadith deals with responsibility. It deals with wisdom, foresight, long-term planning, good strategy. Every one of us has been blessed with these five blessings. Every one of us. There is no one amongst us who has not been blessed with these five things. So how do we utilize them? And for what do we utilize them? And why do we utilize them? The wise person is the one who strives to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then expects the best from Allah. The wise one is one who tries to arrive at the goal and then places his tawakkul in Allah. Tawakkul does not mean that you sit back and you say that, oh, this will happen to me. No, you must strive for it. And the fool is the one who follows his desires and then presumes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him. There is a hadith in which there is a slight weakness in it. It is not 100% authentic, a slight weakness in it, but the meaning of the hadith is definitely authentic, and this hadith also proves the general meaning of this hadith. The Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said, الْكَيِّسُ مَنْ دَانَ نَفْسَهُ وَعَمِلَ لِمَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ وَالْعَاجِزُ مَنْ أَتْبَعَ نَفْسَهُ هَوَاهَا وَتَمَنَّ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْأَمَانِ This is reported in a tirmidhi which, which we said a very slight weakness in it. The Prophet is reported to have said, the wise person, the wise person is he who controls himself, he who has a grasp over himself, he who accounts, makes himself accountable, and he strives to work for that which is after death. He strives to work for the hereafter. And the fool is the one who allows his soul to follow its every desire and yet he expects the best from Allah. He allows his soul to do whatever he wants and yet he thinks, oh Allah will forgive me, oh Allah will give me this, oh Allah will give me Jannah. This is the fool because he allowed his souls to follow every single desire and he didn't put the proper effort in to obtaining the rewards and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With this hadith, we will conclude this short talk and we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us amongst those who can ightanim, who can seize these five things, who can take advantage of them before the five will come and inevitably these five matters will ever sure be taken away from us to be substituted by the other five that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk